So here we can check out the newsletter. I'm sure by now you've received it. This is covering the week from the 4th of April through until the 11th. So one of the first things they mention um, is just about some of the Bitcoin whales. So you'll, you'll see and by now you'll sort of have, sort of figured it out that um, one of the first topics we'll always deal with in the newsletter is with regards to Bitcoin and what's happening. Now this is because a lot of the other cryptos, in fact, all of the other cryptos follow uh, more or less the patterns of Bitcoin. So yeah, we all follow the big daddy there, all right? So Bitcoin whales, they indicating they fill their bags despite warnings that Bitcoin could drop below 40,000. Now, if we look at the charts over here, we can see that Bitcoin's been pushing over, let's say here we are on the 11th. This is just for the last month, okay? So you can see within the last month, we have hit a high of about 48,000. Um, obviously that became major resistance, kept on pushing down. And you can see at the moment, it's just over $40,400. Um, if we look closer into that, let's maybe look over just within the last day to see what's been going on. And here you can see, keeps going up, pushing, and it goes to lower lows. And then we've got the high, and then we've got you know it pushing. So this, this sort of 40, 42,000 range here, it's probably up until about there. Um, that's become a big area of resistance again. And, you know, traders are looking at, well, what is it going to do? Is it going to be pushing up again? Is it going to be pushing to the 41, 42,000 level? Well, at least it's still above 40,000. And that's, <laughs> that's always a good sign. So yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it from there. So they mentioned to us here, data from TradingView showed that um, BTC USD was slowly dissolving support levels in place that, uh, you know, that was there for a number of weeks. Multiple tests of the 43,000 area, yeah, gave way to, you can see where it's pushing down to, around about 40,000. So the bulls are hoping for a rescue move, right, with cross crypto liquidations totaling 200 million in the last 24 hours. And this was probably in the last 24 hours when it was written on Saturday. Uh, for traders, the short term outlook is firmly bearish in character a popular commentator crypto ed eyed uh, a retest of around 40,000 now what did we see a retest of around 40,000 hmm right so chainic spot on there again and guys if you want to buy bitcoin you know what to do click on the link it's going to take you to the markets and that's where you can go and buy your bitcoin then they also mentioned the highlight Solana. So let me just close that. And we're looking at Solana. Here's a bit of interesting info. It risks a 35% price crash with a price chart showing a megaphone pattern. Now, let me just get this up here. This was another headline also looking at more or less the same thing. Um, but here's the megaphone pattern that they were actually talking about. So here you can see what Solana has obviously done within the last while. But where it is now, you can see you've either got a bullish megaphone that's going to break upward or you've got um, your megaphone that's, you know, sort of pushing downward. And we can see here from where this one started, it didn't start going up, but it rather started coming down, uh, got to that level, retested. That would be number two over there coming down, moving up to number four, as we can see. And so based on that, if it is going to follow this, yeah, then it is definitely going to be moving down somewhat. Again, perfect time to buy in, <laughs> okay, if it does that. Um, so they just mentioned here, Solana market grapples with multiple bearish setups if it breaks below its key 50-week moving average. It risks crashing around 35% in the coming days. Now, we know there was talk... Um, sorry, where am I now with uh, Solana? Let me just go here and... You know, guys, it's important also to have a look at what's happening in the markets, not just over the last day, but to see what's been happening, you know, over the last seven days. And yes, even though we see Solana around here, um, if we look at what's been happening over the last month, right, we can see, yes, it's 100 over there. We've had a high year in the last month of around $140. Um, so for those, and this is why crypto, you know, for those who, who don't know as much as Perhaps they should. 
um, it does become a long-term game. And if you, if you, pl if you are playing the long-term game, look what's happening. I mean, you would have gotten in around here, let's say 80, you know, 75, $80. And even in its current state, you'd still be in profit. It's just, yeah, obviously you want to time things correctly when it comes to these markets. So they are mentioned to us here. Sol has been sketching a similar pattern since the beginning of 2022 with the coin undergoing a pullback after testing the megaphone's upper trend line near $140, which I mentioned. Okay, so just keep that in mind when it comes to Solana. If we see um, that it does start you know, doing that, we know, we can already anticipate where it's going to go. Um, and then, yeah, you can just uh, click on the link over here, see where you want to actually get in, in terms of buying your Solana on Chainix, and then you're good to go. Okay. In the next one, XRP. There's been a lot of talk about XRP. Um, I know there was talk on exchanges, a lot of movement of XRP on exchanges. XRP still holding on to that 70 cents uh, per coin price. We've even seen 313 million uh, XRP wired by Ripple and exchanges, while Ripple locks 800 million XRP in escrow. So um, we've seen a lot of movement there. We are also seeing uh, the SEC and Ripple still battling this thing out. And even though there's you know, been some good news on the side of Ripple, it's not really doing too much to the price. Okay. So I think that's basically what, what they were talking about. These transfers um, from 60 million to 40 million and 30 million, the smallest movement moving around 12 million coins. This, these increased XRP transactions have been occurring after Ripple spread word about RippleNet's adoption. Now, I just want to show you this quickly. Um, yeah, over here, when you go to RippleNet, right, the, the whole network over here, you can see that there are hundreds of financial institutions who have already jumped on RippleNet. You're looking at different exchanges, you're looking at a couple of banks as well, American Express. So, in terms of Ripple's use case, in terms of Ripple's utility, they've got the case, right? They know exactly what they're doing. This is why we're finding more of these type of institutions um, getting involved with them. So uh, a lot happening there. And again, you can click on the link to buy your XRP on Chainix. And then there was some news around Chainlink. So they mentioned that Chainlink surges ahead but struggles to sustain you know, a value above $16. So let's go and have a look at what's happening there with Chainlink. And you can see over the last day, um, you know, what sort of happened. It's been around $15 in the last day or so. It's come down to it is around $14.09. Let's see what's been happening over the last seven days. Pretty much the same over the last month now. Now it begins to look better. Why? Because when we take a wider view of this, right? Larger snapshot of this, we can actually see, I mean, if you got in at the beginning of the month, you're talking about $12 a coin and it's around about $14. Again, you're still in profit, right? Uh, obviously, the people that got in at $18, yeah, they're the ones that are going to be moaning. Um, but this is why it just depends on what your strategy is. Are you in for the long game? Um, you know, are you in just to make a quick bit of money and then move out. Uh, obviously, you'd have different feelings around that. So they're just talking about that and mentioning also the retracement suggests that further upward movement of the altcoin is possible. If the bulls can break through the $16 resistance, Chainlink should rise to around $19. So yeah, we are looking forward to seeing. There were a couple of tweets on um, you know, Twitter as well with regards to Chainlink and what they are doing. And despite what's going on with the price, they are still moving forward with things like their Spring Hackathon, um, their, their Chainlink Academy, you know, teaching people, helping people understand more about it. Um, you can always go to the Chainlink website itself and just make sure that you are connected to their official pages. Okay. And again, as usual, guys, you can click on the link here to buy your chain link again as always we've got our earn portal please go and check that out you know you can 
have your crypto earning crypto with USDT and BTC on Chainix. So go and have a look at that. Check out the blog and they'll give you all the details around that. Then as usual, our price analysis, some more technical price analysis on what's happening with Bitcoin. And then you can also see that our fear and greed index has moved once again. It's moved all the way back into the fear arena. Last time we were together, it was well into the greed section. Uh, but a lot has happened just within the space of a week to push people into feeling more fear um, around the crypto uh, sector. So, yeah, that should be it for us for this week. Um, remember now that's on Chainlink with what's happening with them. XRP, we've seen a lot of movement of coins on exchanges. Um, not too much moving in the price. Solana, in for a bit of a crash there if it follows that same pattern. Um, and then Bitcoin as well. We're looking to see if it's going to remain on that $40,000 level. So guys, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week.